Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I just wanted to finish up this little study I was doing and mentioned in the last video about trying to identify uh, what DSOs out there that are visible from my backyard, uh, but are also worthy of uh, interesting targets, worthy of, of spending some imaging time on. And so I just want to share with you the results of that study here. This is just to reset uh, an overview, a Google image of, of my neighborhood and my house and the center of this uh, wheel here is where I have the telescope in the backyard. Now at the time this image was taken there were no houses back here and then I woke up the next day and there's a whole neighborhood back there behind me including a uh, very strategically planted tree about right here. Um, that'll be a problem later I suppose. But anyway this is the uh, the issue uh, that we all have to deal with to some degree. Uh, in this case I've got a fairly nice view to the north and as you sweep around in azimuth around 50 degrees to 60 degrees I start to pick up roof lines of houses down the street get up around 70 80 degrees now I'm picking up the neighbor's house 90 degrees all the way through the south I'll go through my house and by the way in this neighborhood the the there's the roof pitches are very high uh, so it's the roofs are fairly tall um, and then finally I get around to 200 degrees and I start to come down off the roof of the neighbor's house and then I'm blocked a little bit by the houses down the street and then finally I'm back clear looking just across my fence back to the north. So it's this region back here that I'm having difficulty imaging targets and so I wanted to come up with a way of, of factoring that in when I, when I search for targets. And we discussed that last time. Here's the... Uh, altitude azimuth plot that I came up with and as you can see as I'm sitting next to the fence and at looking north I'm okay we get to the neighbor's houses down the or the houses down the street then my neighbor's house my house and so on so I have this 30 degree 30 to 40 degree region here where I'm blocked um, but still have quite a bit of sky to work with so that's not too too bad this is the summary of all the DSOs I put in a list uh, of hundreds, uh, maybe approaching a thousand, I don't know, of DSOs of certain type. There were no elliptical galaxies. I wanted barred or spiral galaxies. Um, some nebula, but the Sharpless catalog is in here, for example. Um, went through all of them in a, some calculations that, that was mentioned in the previous video. And this is what I came up with. What you're seeing is the observing score, which is basically a measure of how long is a target observable how many hours per night or the best night and what is the maximum altitude so a high observing score uh, such as this guy right here is a target that's probably up for over 11 hours and gets close to the 90 degree uh, altitude mark uh, for a range of days perhaps during the year and then uh, the very low scores are when a target just barely is up for four hours uh, and just reaches about 30 degrees of, of altitude. So somewhere in here are all the targets. And as you can see, there's a very interesting little division we discussed last time, and we already know ahead of time, that the galaxies, there's about four month period here where it's solid galaxies, except for just a smattering of three nebula. And then we go through about four months where it's almost all nebula with just a few galaxies sprinkled in. And then another four months where it's kind of a mixture of galaxies and nebula. This plot was shown last time. Uh, this is a little bit different because I did find a, a little error that, that was um, not accurately identifying the first day of the year when uh, the target would be visible at its optimum time. And so I fixed that, and so this is the revised plot. But the story is still basically the same. We have galaxy season, nebula season, and then kind of a mixture of the two. Now, what I've done, and this is <laughs> extremely boring, uh, each one of these is some NGC, IC, or uh, SH2 object. I went through every single one of these and into the web, looked them up, and tried to determine if they were a target worth taking a picture of. For example, if it's a more of an elliptical galaxy or it doesn't have much structure to it, then I wasn't that interested. Uh, if it's a target that's very small in my field of view of my scope, then I'm not that interested in that one either. 
And in cases of some nebula, they were very faint. Uh, there's no one is really taking pictures of them because of that. And so I threw those out. And then there are a few cases where there's a, uh, a, a slip through where a Sharpless catalog item and, and the corresponding NGC item were both in the catalog. And so I didn't need to have uh, the double representation of those. And there are some cases such as M51 where there's two interacting galaxies. They both have two different NGC numbers, but there's no point in taking a, pic a picture of, or keeping hold of a, um, a designation for the smaller NGC item when you can't possibly take a picture of, of one without the other. So there's a lot of weeding out, and uh, here's what that looked like. Okay, so here's kind of a combination look at what I came up with. This table over here in this Excel spreadsheet is the list of all of the DSOs that were found and found to be observable uh, for a sufficient period of time from my backyard. What I've done is, as I said, gone through each one of these these items, which is each one of these items over here, looked them up on the web, and... Uh, decided if if it was a target worthy of spending time on. So, for example, we're here in January. This is January 6th is when we get the best observing score for the target in this column. In this case, it's the, one of the lowest observing scores you can have because this target was only up for a maximum uh, some day during the year, a maximum of four hours, and uh, reached an altitude of 30.7. So this is about the minimum uh, observing score you can get using my ranking criteria and i just went through each one of these and looked at the target is it interesting well this one i felt was sort of interesting but i colored it yellow so in other words it's a backup i'll only go to it if i run out of good targets the orange ones i labeled as not being worth imaging and then the green ones are the ones that are worth imaging so there's a number of these we can go through january here it doesn't take long to get through january and when I went to the web to look them up, and it was a target I wanted to take a picture of, then I would just copy off a picture of it just to remember, to remind myself what it actually looked like. And so that's what you're seeing here. In the month of January, these are the targets that are, that are up and worth taking a picture of. And we'll look at this closer up in a minute. But anyway, I went through this for hundreds of these that were found and ranked them. Now you can see we're into March, which is a good month. Then we get into uh, April, June, and so on. And so I, f I finally completed the uh, process of going through all these stupid things and uh, identifying which are the targets that are, are worthy of taking a picture of. Let me show you this from a month-to-month -month basis, and maybe uh, in later on you can freeze frame individual months, and you might become aware of some targets that, that you might be interested in taking pictures of. Okay, so here we are in January. There were only just a handful of targets worthy of taking a picture of. Uh, one nebula object. Here's an interesting uh, dual galaxy pair I thought was kind of cool. I hadn't been aware of that before. And this galaxy's got a lot of nice structure to it. NGC 3359. Um, some decent targets, but not a whole lot going on in January. In February, we start to pick up with some uh, interesting a large number of galaxies. We're getting it well into galaxy season now. There's the, the Owl Nebula is the one nebula that was available in uh, February. But some really cool interacting uh, galaxies such as NGC 4038. Uh, excellent targets. Uh, NGC 3938 is a good one. And another two closely uh, spaced galaxies here. So once again, a lot of good uh, targets in February. March, now we're in the, the heart of galaxy season, and, and uh, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. These are, uh, wherever possible, I've pulled out the, N the uh, NGC numbers that are associated with the Messier objects. All the Messier objects that are optimally visible during this month are, are shown here. Uh, this is a very interesting one that I don't believe I've seen before, where two fairly large galaxies side on and, and kind of inclined angle here, NGC 42 98 looks like an interesting target. Now, let me show you what happens. This is just a large number of galaxies, but this is how many are actually there. So in other words, we were just looking at this section of all these galaxies. Meanwhile, there's all these others that are also worthy of, of imaging from my perspective, but there's quite a few targets out there. That was what struck me is just how many targets I was finding that looked like they'd be really interesting. We go into April, 
we're getting it again it's just solid galaxies this is interesting this ngc 5427 two interacting galaxies again i think that's one of my favorite uh, imaging subjects uh, the uh, galaxy clusters are kind of interesting and in MA, things dial down quite a bit. We've lost, uh, there's not many targets at all that are optimally visible in May. We have a couple of, of nebula creeping in because we're getting into uh, nebula season, the blue horsehead nebula over here, NGC 4592, and just a couple of galaxies that are, that are worth taking a picture of. In June, it's all nebula, um, mostly from the Sharpless catalog. I guess all of these are from the Sharpless catalog, except for IC 4701. Um, but some good uh, nebula targets. July, again, nebulas. So a lot of good targets here. handful of targets anyway. One galaxy. And then we get into August, and now we're really getting into the heart of, of nebula season here with uh, a number of, of uh, the famous nebula that uh, folks take a picture of, the Tulip, Veil, Dumbbell. Um, NGC 6946 is the one galaxy in here. I've imaged that one before. I'll have to go back and do it now with the new camera. Uh, but, you know, there's some interesting targets. September, we're getting more into that mixed region where it's half nebula, half galaxies uh, that are targets uh, the last four months of the year where the uh, targets are a mix. Uh, some decent galaxies. The Sculptor Galaxy comes up here and, uh, in, this, in this month. But, again, a lot of famous... Um, nebula so we have the the uh, elephant trunk nebula squid cocoon iris nebula a lot of good uh, a lot of good nebula targets here and then in october andromeda comes up we've got the bubble nebula and uh ngc891 which is that nice edge on galaxy i've imaged that before with my dslr once again I have to go back and do that again um with this new setup but again, a mixture of, uh, of some nebula and galaxies. And then November, December. Now, let's look at the, in December, so we were looking at this picture here. So there's still some extra targets that are worthy of, of uh, imaging. In November, there's just maybe six or seven more that are worthy of imaging that couldn't fit onto the screen. And in October, there's a handful more gets pretty sparse during the middle of the year short nights and then we get a fire hose of galaxies in March going forward what I would do is pick out a galaxy to image uh, let's just say it's um, 5033 here so in the process of of identifying these targets I would go through this list of graphs and I'll show you what one of these looks like and if it was a target worthy of of uh, imaging I would put an underscore in front of it and maybe some additional descriptive text depending if it was for example a Messier object or some other or the, a named nebula for example and so I put the underscore in there so that all of the good targets are just arranged themselves up at the top of the list here so if we went to NGC 5033 and this is what I have. So it shows me at a glance for its altitude, minimum altitude, maximum altitude in green, uh, and for every day of the month or every day of the year over here. So this target reaches a, has a peak observing score of 0.86, which occurs on March 20th. So what's happening is it's getting up to this point. At this point, the target is up. This blue line represents the number of observe, the observing time and hours gets up, it's observable for about 10 and a half hours, and it reaches a maximum altitude of about uh, 86 degrees or so. And so that's, that's a very good target to image because of its height above the horizon and the long, the number of hours it's, a, it's visible during that night. So this is the observing time, the best time to observe this target. So the study took a long time, but I think it was fairly useful in that it uh, helped me reduced down a, from a mix of thousands of DSOs, those d uh, deep sky objects that are visible from the backyard and are worthy of imaging. I found about 300 of them, so I'm not, I'm not, uh, too, too <laughs> not too limited in terms of number of targets available. Um, turns out I found a lot by going to the web. I found a lot of interesting targets that I had never even seen before in terms of other folks imaging. And so I'm looking forward to being able to image them. Um, 
If I could image one target in a 10-day period, which would be a miracle for me, uh, that's 10 years of imaging from this list and from my backyard. So it turns out my, what I call a restrictive, restricted view, uh, blocked horizon is not that blocked. It's actually probably a pretty healthy filter, uh, but I've got plenty of targets uh, to deal with, uh, just not enough time to deal with them. All I need is some clear skies and some smooth guiding. It'd be nice for a change. All right, guys, thanks for hanging in there.